Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Good morning. We welcome everyone as we gather for the Eucharist today here at the National Shrine of St. Therese. And we welcome all those who are also uh, watching us at home on their televisions as we live stream the Mass. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Vincent de Paul. And uh, we're going to speak about him and his witness in the church in the course of the Mass today. Uh, my brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the Holy Eucharist by calling to mind our faults and failings before the Lord. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who for the relief of the poor and the formation of the clergy endowed the priest St. Vincent de Paul with apostolic virtues, grant, we pray, that a fire with that same spirit we may love what he loved and put into practice what he taught. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something, so that no human being might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that, as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is Alleluia. 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 Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. Right? The upright generation shall be blessed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His generosity shall endure forever. Light shines through the darkness 
for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Alleluia. Well for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. He shall never be moved. The just one shall be in everlasting remembrance. Alleluia. Alleluia. An evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steadfast. He shall not fear till he looks down upon his foes. Alleluia. Alleluia. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. Alleluia. Alleluia. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep, and mine know me. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like a sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Vincent de Paul. And St. Vincent de Paul is probably known because in almost every Catholic parish, at least throughout the United States, there's a St. Vincent de Paul Society that's uh, really focused on helping the poor. I was a pastor in Kansas in my hometown, a Carmelite parish where I grew up for 20 years. And one of the groups that I was, uh, well, most enamored with was this small group of men that were in the St. Vincent de Paul Society. Uh, they weren't interested in having too many fraternal meetings. They had no potlucks. They had a couple small organizational meetings in the course of the year. We had one collection for them and they took that collection for uh, Christmas baskets to needy families that were in the town and they were always working behind the scenes and uh, one of the things that I really respected them for as a pastor if there was ever somebody that came knocking at the parish office at nine o'clock at night uh, there was no shelter for them the men of the St. Vincent de Paul Society would immediately come and, and take care of the situation. Now, even though I grew up in a Carmelite parish in Leavenworth, Kansas, the town is imbued with the charism of Vincent de Paul because of the Sisters of Charity there. I was born in a hospital that they founded. I went to grade school and high school run by Sisters of Charity. And St. Vincent de Paul was really part of this great charism of the Vincentians and the Sisters of Charity, which has had a great effect in the church. We hear in the gospel passage, Jesus says the uh, the harvest is abundant, but the labors are few. But you see, one man, just like Vincent de Paul, can change the nature of the church. Throughout the history of the Catholic Church, there's probably been three main uh, movements for religious orders. The first was the Benedictines. And the Benedictines, of course, lived in a monastery, uh, Labora and Ora, praying and working in a monastery and being stable. And uh, that uh, religious form of life has been around since the 500s. Then in the 1200s, the Carmelites, the Franciscans, the Dominicans, the Augustinians were part of the great mendicant movement. And uh, we we're a group of friars that moved from one place to another, not stable like the Benedictines, uh, but having a strong charism and a strong prayer life, particularly the Carmelites. But the third group of religious orders are more focused on apostolic ministries like the Jesuits or the Vincentians, the Sisters of Charity. Our mission is to run schools. Our mission is to 
take care of uh, uh, Catholic children so they'll grow up in the faith. Our mission is to help the poor. A little bit about Vincent de Paul, who inspired this charism in the church. He was born in France, an uh, area called Gascony in the southwestern part of France, not too far from the great shrine of Our Lady of Lourdes today. He was born in uh, 1581, very poor family, third of six children. His parents were peasants, but uh, he was a sharp young man. He learned to read and write. At the age of 15, he went to the seminary and he was uh, ordained a diocesan priest at the age of 19. So the age of 19. Even at that time, it was illegal to ordain somebody in the church that young. After the Council of Trent, you had to be at least 24 years old to be ordained, but well, Vincent was precocious and he got ordained at the age of 19. But because he was ordained technically too early, he couldn't take on a parish, so he went on for studies in Toulouse and Paris and uh, continued his uh, work in theology. Well, then he had an interesting event in his life that took place when he was in his mid-twenties. He was on a boat from the southern part of France, Marseille, to another town in France, in the Mediterranean, and the Barbary pirates came along and they captured him, and he ended up in the Muslim nation of North Africa, and he was sold as a slave. Now imagine this man who is an educated priest in France, and he's sold in this Muslim nation as a, a slave. So his first slave owners, they were fishermen, but uh, Vincent wasn't a very good fisherman because he was seasick. Every time he got out on the ocean, he was sick. So they sold him off to the next guy, and his next master uh, was a, uh, what we call today probably a pharmacist, an alchemist. And when he died, he was sold to his third master. Now, this is an interesting story which contrasts the life of Vincent de Paul. His third master had been a Franciscan priest who was sold into slavery in Muslim North Africa, and he converted to Islam. He abrogated the Christian faith. He was living with three wives in the Muslim nation there of what's today Tunisia when Vincent became a slave. But one of his wives, a Muslim woman, was so taken with Vincent's spirituality, she convinced her husband to take Vincent back to France where he was liberated. And then at that point, he returned to Paris and began his mission as a priest. We see Vincent as this great hero who brought this charism of charity into the church. But in the early days of his priesthood, when he was in his 20s, he was just looking for a comfortable life. But he had a conversion of heart when he was hearing the confession of a poor woman on her deathbed. And from that point on, uh, Vincent was a very holy man. He really accomplished three things that we should remember today. He founded the Vincentian order of priests as well as the Daughters of Charity. The Sisters of Charity here in the United States are from that charism. He worked with the poor. He said, you know, if the doorbell rings, somebody's at the door, leave your prayers and go help the poor person. He said, the Sisters of Charity, we don't want you in a cloister like the Carmelites. We want you out on the streets of the town. The parish church should be uh, your chapel. Don't worry about having a habit. Go out there and help with the poor. And the third thing he was known for was for training of the clergy because he realized in his own training, the only way the church is really going to be able to preach the word of God is if there are well-trained uh, priests and seminarians. Vincent died in 1660. Uh, he was 79 years old, had been a priest for 60 years. This one man in the vineyard of the Lord has made a tremendous contribution to the church uh, because he kept his heart focused on Jesus Christ. Now let us offer our prayers to our gracious God. We pray today on this feast of St. Vincent de Paul for the Vincentians, the Daughters of Charity, the Sisters of Charity, uh, for all the good work of uh, the people of the St. Vincent de Paul Society in our country. We pray to the Lord. We pray that we may have a heart like Vincent, always concerned for the poor. We pray to the Lord. We pray today in a special way for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for our archbishops and bishops of our country, and particularly our Bishop Ronald Hicks of Joliet. We pray to the Lord. Lord pray for the sick and suffering members of our families, parish communities, for those who are suffering with COVID. Pray for an end of the pandemic around the world. We pray to the Lord. 
We pray for all our beloved dead and the special intention of today's Mass for the repose of the soul of Matthew. We pray to the Lord. Good and loving God, we offer these petitions as well as all those special intentions we hold close to our hearts, and we make them all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O well, God, who enables St. Vincent de Paul to imitate what he celebrated in the Divine Mysteries, grant that by the power of this sacrifice, we too may be transformed into an oblation acceptable to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Spirit of the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Vincent de Paul, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Vincent de Paul and St. Therese of the Child Jesus, and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a safe sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 
the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 Let us pray. Renewed by this heavenly sacrament, O Lord, we implore that just as we are prompted by St. Vincent de Paul's example to imitate your son and his preaching of the gospel to the poor, so too we may be sustained by his prayers. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have the feast of St. Therese of the Child Jesus coming this Friday. We have three masses here at the National Shrine. You can see on the poster there in the back of the church, the times for all those masses, and I ask that you join in this novena prayer today uh, in honor of St. Therese's feast day. St. Therese, flower of fervor and love, please intercede for us. Fill our hearts with your pure love of God. As we approach and celebrate your feast day, make us more aware of the goodness of God and how well he tends his garden. Instill in us your little way 
of doing ordinary things with extraordinary love. Give us the heart of a child who wonders at life and embraces everything with loving enthusiasm. Teach us your delight in God's ways so that divine charity may blossom in our hearts. Little flower of Jesus, bring our petitions before God our Father. before God our Father. With your confidence, we come before Jesus as God's children, because you are our heavenly friend. As we celebrate the feast day of your homecoming in heaven, continue to shower roses and grace upon us. And as we conclude our Mass, let's offer a Hail Mary to our Blessed Mother, and I pray that we might have uh, workers in the, for the harvest, uh, vocations to the priesthood and religious life in our church. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord.